Central New York, you have some of the best high school hoops team in the entire state. Good evening, I'm Nico Tamuri. Now we know that Bishop Ludden has been number one in Class A for a while now, but new tonight, the West Hill Warriors are ranked number one in Class B for all of boys basketball in New York State. So tonight we're going to go to Class AA. Couple of teams fighting for sectional seedings. Remember the playoffs start in three weeks. Corcoran looking good early against CNS. Marcos Gonzalez, the steal. Look at this. In transition. Absolutely beautiful pass after the fake right there to Devon Ganey for two. Cougars down by eight. Still scratching, clawing at that lead. LaShawn Jerry and Jameson. Look at him. Spin, wheel, deal, and score. My goodness, that was pretty. But the North Stars are too much tonight. From the defensive rebound at one, an outlet pass to Brian DeMonte. Nobody's going to stop him for the bucket. The whistle and the foul. North Stars go on to win. 71-61 was the final. Now to the girls' side. Same schools flip the venues, though. Both teams showing off their three-point prowess tonight. Taylor Williams, youngest member of the Corcoran squad. Look at that. Banks it in. She's in eighth grade. CNS can ball as well, though. Michaela Roberts, sophomore point guard on the baseline, stops, pops, drills it right there. CNS goes on to win. 65 29 was the final. Class B now, Bishop Ludden hosting Altlar Parish, Williamstown. Competitive contest from the get go. Deshay Jones spots up from the arc right here. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Rebels lead Ludden by two at that point. But here come the Gaelic Knights. Off the inbounds pass, Nicole Grantine somehow gets it to go. But the foul, the boot. Nifty play. Ludden works hard on offense. Stephanie Brazil a little bit later gets the jumper to go. Right in front of your living room here. Ludden wins a close one. 58-50 the final. JD boys basketball hosting Fowler. Rams on a four-game winning streak. Adrian Autry, of course, son of S2 legend. And my orange home co-host of the same name. Gets going on the fast break. Lays it up and in. JD goes on to win 73-57. Wants the final. Well, the Syracuse Orange is the leader of the pack. Now, it's not a huge surprise to us here in central New York, but the rest of the country mesmerized by Syracuse and its meteoric rise to the top of those ACC standings. Now, let's temper the excitement for just a bit. Still six weeks left in the regular season, but Syracuse certainly showing the pundits a lot with these rallies and close victories, something New York says, actually, they'd like to avoid a little bit. It is good to win the close games, but, uh, I mean, you want to be in as... I mean, you don't want to be in a lot of close games, but I mean, uh, to make the gutsy plays at the end, and especially uh, against a physical team like, like Pittsburgh, um, I mean, it definitely shows a lot about this team. And I mean, if you can win games like this, you, you can beat anybody. We've had a lot, you know, a lot more than a lot. Of, uh, you know, being undefeated, we, we've you know fought to the end a, a couple times so far, and uh, I think it helps us, you know, build this confidence for the end of the games. And uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we we don't have to come down to those, you know, too many, too much more in the, the conference. Well, it's something like minus seven outside. Let's talk a little spring sports. Ooh, it's a sign that spring's coming, man. SU Women's Lacrosse opens oh. up its season tonight at Jacksonville oh, University. Thank goodness. Kayla Trainer right there with one of her five goals. The Orange win easily 21 to 7, but. I think the big story here is that lacrosse season starting and it's minus seven degrees outside. Well, I was concerned they were playing on like, you know, a, a coin field or something and they no. hadn't put on their outer gear. <laughs> no, they are definitely playing. That's in Florida. Florida. We're as much warmer tonight. Thanks, Nico. Later on, Leno.